Hey guys, welcome to today's video where I'm going to fill in yet another port on my 8 gang switch panel for a total of 5 inputs. And to do that, I am going to install some chase lights. I'll be using the 3 inch pair from Oxbeam that are 80 watts and they output 8,000 lumens. And you can either use the white or the amber lenses. Today I'm going to be using the amber lens because it's a little bit easier on the eyes. Chase lights aren't really meant to give you tons of light, but more just to let people know where you are in dusty conditions. Now I have a bit of an interesting situation because my GX470 does not have the rear spoiler. So I can't just install the super easy JW off-road under wing mount. I have to find a different solution. So what I'm gonna do is actually drill into my JW off-road roof rack and mount them on the side like this. I think it gives a pretty good look and it definitely exposes the lights. No problem outside of any obstructions. The problem I think a lot of people might run into is the fact that no harness is really long enough to make it all the way from the back there to the front, to their battery, anything like that. So I have one harness and then I have a leftover harness from my Baja Designs fog lights that I never ended up using that I'm going to cut up and make into a single harness. So I'm just going to take the wires that go from the light connectors into the relay and cut as far down as I can for the OEM Oxbeam harness. Then I'm going to get my old Baja Designs harness and do the same same thing so I just have an extra length of positive and negative wire that I can use to extend the harness further. So here I am just cutting and stripping back the Baja Designs harness that I'm going to use and getting it ready to join up to the Oxbeam one. For some reason the positive cable on the Baja Designs ones is white so it's a different color than the red one on the Oxbeam but that's no problem. I'm just going to keep the black ground cables consistent and I won't worry about what color the positive wire is. So I have everything stripped back on both sets of wires. Now it's time to just join these two extra lengths from the extra harness, the Baja Designs one, to the OEM Oxbeam one. And to do that I am going to cut a length of heat shrink first of all in half so that it's the correct length that I'm looking for and I'm going to slip that onto one end or the other of the part of the wire that I want to join together. Then I'm going to wrap those wires together with each respective one positive or negative. So for this one, I'm doing the two positive cables and then I'm going to slip that heat shrink over the join that I did. You can also solder as well, but I found that this twisting them together works just fine. And then I'm going to get a heat source like a torch and just shrink that shrink wrap right up to it and this should create a good durable strong seal that is also weatherproof. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the negative side so that's slip the heat shrink over on one side or the other twist the wires together put the shrink wrap over shrink it down with a heat source and then you have a nice durable seal and you can also wrap some electrical tape around those connections to make sure that it's nice and weatherproof for the long term. Now we have a nice long harness that'll easily make it all the way from the chase lights to the battery or my switch panel in my case. Now it's time for the mounting solution. As I said before, I'm just gonna drill into my JW off-road roof rack and I'm gonna start with a smaller bit and then follow that up with a larger bit these are titanium tipped bits that I got for like $20. They make it super easy to drill through steel and then you could just mount pretty much anything anywhere on your steel roof rack. Now I'm just assembling the chase lights with the included hardware and doing a test fit to make sure that everything looks okay. And I'm happy to report that everything goes in just fine and using the included nuts and washer set, everything gets secured down super tight, making for a nice clean install. So this. This is the final look and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now I just need to figure out how to route the wiring to make sure that I can get these lights powered up. First I need to mount up the other side so I'm going to drill another pilot hole and then follow that up with a larger bit as well just like I did for the other side and then we're going to have the same look on the driver and passenger side and tighten it up with a nice socket wrench so that it's totally rigid. Now it's time to get under the hood and see how we're gonna connect this up to the switch panel or in some other cases, the battery. This is where you would just hook it up to your battery and then run the switch inside. You could check out my off-road LED light install guide video to get more information on how to do that. But if you have a switch panel, this is gonna be the procedure. Basically, loosen up those lugs, tie 
light together, positive for the left and right light and negative for the left and right light together. And then put those inside of the lugs and tighten the lugs back up. And that's all. And check out who decided to help me out today. Maybe he knew it was Father's Day and knew that daddy hates wiring. So he wanted to help me out. I don't know, but he was right. I definitely needed his help with this one. So I started by running both wires across through the cowl to the passenger side of the vehicle and all the way back to the rear chase lights that I'm installing today along the windshield. I've used this cowl area to run wires on the ditch lights and also my upper light bar that's on the roof rack. And I think it's a really good place to hide wiring and make for a really clean look. Unfortunately for me, I shouldn't have run both wires all the way to the back because one of the wires doesn't make it all the way to the left hand side chase light. So I had to actually put that one back through the cowl and run it along the driver's side of the vehicle because again, that thing doesn't quite reach over. So this is me just doing that whole process, running it up along the windshield, feeding the wire underneath that wind fairing for the JW off-road roof rack, and then kind of securing the wire along the side of it until it reaches to the back. And now that I have both chase lights connected up through the harness to the aux beam switch panel, I figure I might as well just give it a try so this is what it looks like. I think it's the perfect amount of light to do a chase light with because I don't want to blind anybody behind me, but I want to make sure they can see me during the daytime in very dusty or inclement weather conditions. Now I'm just securing all the odds and ends and excess wiring, making sure that there's nothing flapping around in the wind under there and using zip ties and tape where necessary. And to run it along the windshield, I actually use vinyl wrap. So I cut out a strip of vinyl that is the length of the windshield and I coat the entire length of wire that runs along the windshield in vinyl wrap and stick it down in as clean a way as possible. So here you can just see me putting the wire on. It takes a little bit of time, especially when it's windy outside when you're trying to work with vinyl wrap, it's not ideal, but you're able to get a pretty clean look from doing it this way. And you don't have to drill into your car or anything crazy like that. I just think it's the best way to do it. And it offers the most convenient solution in my opinion. So here I'm just running the passenger side wire along the side, securing everything with zip ties, just like I said before with the driver's side. And that is going to be the final bit of installation. And check out how everything looks here. I'm just closing the hood, making sure that the wires don't kind of come up on the vinyl wrap and everything stays in place. You do have to leave a little bit of excess to make sure the hood can open and close easily, but everything worked flawlessly for me. And here's how the chase lights are gonna look. They're super bright, but they're not so bright that they're going to cause the person behind me to have an aneurysm on the trail. I think the JW off-road roof rack does a great job hiding all wiring while still giving plenty of mounting solutions. With this setup, I also have the option to turn them out a little bit more, which may be good for some camp lighting. Either way, this was a super easy install and I think it's worth it just for some extra safety out on the trail. And let's be honest, chase lights look cool. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I have a bunch of cool content coming out in the future, so make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.